Hello everyone, CakeJawStello here, and today I thought I'd talk about my favorite side quests in the role-playing game Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. Before I get into this list, however, I would like to point out that when playing this game, you really should download the unofficial patch, which you can find through a quick Google search. I came across a forum post the other day, somewhere out there on the internet, where a player was complaining about bugs and eventually stopped playing altogether, and I really don't want that to happen to anyone else who thinks about giving this great game a trot. So please, for your own sake, download the unofficial patch. I recommend the basic version for new players, but the plus patch does add two or three new quests. Anyways, let's get right down to business with number 10. At number 10 is Model Citizen, a side quest given to you by Amalia, a Nosferatu who lives in the Nosferatu Warrens underneath Hollywood. She asks you to plant cameras in the apartment of a model she hates, and then set up the cameras through her computer. It is definitely one of the easiest side quests in the game, but it's memorable for being one of the more humorous events in the game. The model is revealed to have had a threesome with the llama. Yikes. At number 9 is Hut Stripper Assassin Action, which is the first of two side quests given to you by the Toreador vampire named Velvet Valor, who runs Vesuvius, a strip club in Hollywood. Vivi asks you to take out a hunter who is known to work as a stripper in the peep show underneath the Sinbin. One way or another, the player must force the other patrons of the peep show to disappear, as well as the second stripper. What are you looking for, honey? A lockpick skill of 6 is recommended for the change machine and the manager's office, unless you want to take care of the patrons using another method. The quest ends after you have successfully taken care of the stripper. At number 8 are two quests that deal with the same event, which are Fun with Pestilence and A Plague for the Angels, given to you by Damsel of the Last Round and Maximilian of the Tremere Chantry, respectively. Both kindred ask you to seek out the source of a nasty disease infecting the homeless people downtown. After receiving a tip from a homeless woman near the last round, you are able to access a certain alleyway downtown where you meet Tin Can Bill, who pushes you in the right direction before dying. Once down below, you must traverse the sewers until you come across Brother Canker, who must be killed. Completing this quest will lead to another quest called More Fun with Pestilence, also dealing with the plague in the city. At number 7 is Gargoyle Removal Service. After the main quests involving Isaac, the Hollywood Baron, are completed, he will offer you this side quest. A gargoyle has recently taken a liking to Isaac's Asian theater across the street, and he asks you to take care of the problem. It is highly recommended that you go over to the Tremere Chantry first to pick up the Rune of the Third Eye, a special item that makes you stronger against gargoyle attacks. From there, head on over to the Asian Theater in Hollywood. The gargoyle smashes through the glass ceiling and confronts the player, and while some more sociable players will be able to convince the gargoyle to side with Isaac, most players will find themselves at the center of an intense battle. This is definitely one of the most memorable side battles in the entire game. Number 6 is called A Bounty for the Hunter, and is given to you by Arthur Kilpatrick of Kilpatrick's Bail Bonds. You are asked to find a missing bounty hunter named Carson. Investigating his place in the Santa Monica Suites leads you to the tattoo parlor in town, where his bail jumper was living. Not too long after investigating the parlor, you will receive a call from Gimbal's Prosthetics, who was seeking the bail jumper as well. You agree to meet Gimbal and head over to his underground store in the corner of Santa Monica. I really enjoyed this quest because I remember slowly but surely getting unnerved by the atmosphere of the prosthetic shop, especially as I ventured further into the place. As you venture a little too far in, you'll find Carson locked up alongside a stumpy body. Gimbal enters the room and attacks, and you must defeat him as he swings an attached arm at you, a weapon you can pick up for yourself later. Number 5 is called You Only Die Once a Night. This quest is the first of two given to you by Romero, the cemetery guard in Hollywood. He asks you to watch the cemetery for five minutes. After he leaves, zombies start to rise from their graves, and you must prevent any from leaving within a five minute time span, or you fail the quest. This is definitely one of the tougher side quests, but also one of the most fun. Watching over both separate gates will send you running back and forth and slapping zombies till they die a second time. Just don't let them escape will be a violation of the masquerade, but you don't necessarily lose the game if they escape, you just fail the quest. Number 4 on the list is called Thinned Blood. 
A thin blood under the pier in Santa Monica, who goes by E, asks you to find his missing friend Lily. The first clue you have sends you to the diner in town, where you manage to pick up Lily's belongings. Searching through her stuff, you find a bail bond for a man by the name of Rolf Tolton. This clue sends you to Kilpatrick's Bail Bonds, where you look up the name in the computer. You find out that Rolf's car is parked in the garage by the steps down to the pier. After opening the trunk, you'll find Lily's diary, which leads you over to the blood bank. Once at the blood bank, you must sneak through the left door and either convince Phil to let you into the freezer or steal the code from hacking the computer. Once you have the code, you go through the secret passageway in the freezer and find Lily, strapped up to a chair. You release her, and she kills Phil right before your eyes. After dealing with Vandal, the other man who sells blood, head back to E to finish this quest. This quest is one of my favorites because you are sent on a decently long hunt that kept me really intrigued. I'll never let her go again. Number three is Necromantic. Now the best part of this quest is actually the process of receiving the quest. After entering the abandoned hospital downtown, you meet with the producer of a show called Haunted LA, who lost some of his crew members inside the hospital. The player is asked to search for them, and progressing through the hospital is one of the most terrifying parts in this game. Certainly not every quest can be characterized as horror for a sense of genre, but this one sure can, which is what makes it one of my favorites. I remember feeling a sense of dread as I further explored the hospital and not knowing what I was to find was the scariest part. I suppose here I should say spoilers, although I have been spoiling quite a bit so far. But anyways, you end up meeting a Nagaraja vampire named Pisha, who asks you to take care of the producer, so as to not violate the masquerade with his knowledge of what he'd seen. After meeting the producer at his place in Skyline Apartments, you have the option to allow him to live, but personally I recommend that you send him back to Pisha, so that she will like you enough to give you her second quest. Number two is called The Carnival of Death, and the reason I gave this side quest the secondary spot is because it's almost always there in the back of your mind. The quest begins very early in the game, and can easily be the first side quest you pick up if you read the newspaper outside your neighbor's door when you begin the game after the tutorial. A serial killer is on the loose, and you can see his work firsthand on the pier in Santa Monica. You must first finish the side quest A Bounty for the Hunter before you can progress in this quest anymore because you need to be in the middle of Kilpatrick's next quest called Mud Hunt. These two quests are intertwined. After looking for Muddy in the Skyline Apartments, a voice message on his answering machine leads you to a warehouse on the other side of the last round where you find Mud's eviscerated corpse along with a keycard to a room at the Lucky Star Motel in Hollywood. Upon entering the room in Hollywood, you witness the next murder by the killer, who accidentally drops a business card for the Brothers Salvage in Santa Monica. After entering the junkyard, you must chase the serial killer down as he throws junked cars at you. You can either choose to sympathize with the killer, who only killed those who took part in killing his family, or you can choose to fight him because he won't uphold the masquerade. Fight ensues, and killing him completes the quest. And finally, coming in at number one on this list is the Chinatown side quest Gone Fishing. I love everything about this quest, really, but what I love the most is that it shows that the developers weren't afraid to explore the game's source material beyond Vampire the Masquerade. This quest is picked up at the ramen shop in Chinatown and is given to you by a demon hunter named Yuki. She asks you to find out the location of what she calls a demon, or Henke Yokai. You are clued in on an accomplice who stays at the bar in the Red Dragon. He tells you to meet him in the fish market. After telling this to Yuki, the two of you decide to go together. Inside the fish market, it turns out that the man who sent you there was the Hengaioki himself, and a fight ensues. I really can't think of any side quest more exciting than joining with a demon hunter to fight a were shark. All in all, Vampire the Masquerade is full of side quests and extra loot, and I love it because of this. Sure, the main quests are where you see the most action, but the side quests in this game are so strange and unique that I believe they're all worth playing through at least once. Thank you everyone for watching and have a great evening.